こんにちはみんなさんギッツァプルーザにようこそ Hello everyone and welcome to Gets a Palooza. Tonight, Carl and I are going to do a 100 rice game. He is Ito versus my Bakamono, my Savage Wave Bakamono.、Um, we have some fun lists today.、Um, the Bakamono list,、uh, especially, is designed to just be silly and summon as many Bakamono as possible in as short a time as possible. And his list is designed to prevent me from at least s l o w me down a little bit.、Um, and、uh, so he's got more figures than you normally see from one of Carl's Ito lists. And I、uh, don't have that many to start with, but with a little luck, I will have a lot、uh, after turn two or maybe、uh, early in turn two. So there we go. So this is Ryoto.、Uh, three zones of control, scoring on two, four, and six, resetting on three and five. Pretty simple. Here's my Savage Wave list for the day. I have eight Bakamono,、uh, mostly named characters, though I do have both archers. I apologize for Ig、uh, being armless and unpainted in the back. I'm, I'm working on him.、Um, he's the last one to go.、Um, so I start these models, or this army is designed, like I said, to summon as many Bakamono as quickly as possible. So, of course,、um, I'm running,、uh, well, I could run a couple of different.、Um, Themes, but I have chosen Thousand Eyes for a very specific reason.、Um, and I'm going to be summoning Horde Bakamono throughout the game, hopefully.、Um, so there's a lot of key generation in these models. I have a totem pole, which generates an extra couple of key. I've got the、uh, cavern hole, which is the giant fortress or the, the, the giant tree fort in the back, which I, I made without really paying attention to what the restrictions were for cavern hole. So it's not a very good cavern hole. but... We will make sure we play it correctly, regardless of its physical size.、Um, and that gives me some options for where I deploy the summon Bakamono. And I have an Idol of the Deep, which is in, I mean, it's, it's built, it's painted, but I will be dressing it up some between now and then.、Um, and that allows me to、uh, do things for one less key than normal,、uh, including summoning. So, summoning, if I have a model in base to base with the Idol, That model can summon a Bakamono at one、uh, less key than normal. So,、uh, I have, so I have all these guys on the table. This, these are all my Horde Bakamono minus the two archers. This is what I hope to summon、uh, within the first couple of turns. And then, aside from these, I have a few interesting little cards、um, that I'm adding just for giggles.、Um, I've got, I've got. Uh, red spot mushrooms on both of the archers, which gets me two extra w i c e but it makes them impetuous. It also makes them fearless.、Uh, and there's a reason I have that. And、um, then I have ambush on the two archers and h i r a t s u n a So they're going to start elsewhere, and then at, at some turn in the game, they will appear on a flank.、Uh, and then I have.、Um, with those two extra points, I basically picked up. Year of the Risen Sun. And so that、um, gives all the models on the board plus one key token. That includes not just mine, but that includes Carl's models as well. And I also gave pacifism to Wushu because I don't think that most of what you, Wushu does、um, is hurt by pacifism. It won't take it off. So it gives me a chance to pick up some extra、um, uh, scenario points, which I think I'm going to be hurting for because even Carl's. Relatively cheap figures are more than a match for my Bakamono. So,、um, while I'll have maybe a lot of figures on the table, I don't honestly know how effective they're going to be. I guess we'll find out. So, that's the plan.、Uh, that's the army. It comes out to、uh, 102 rice technically, but I get、uh, minus two because of the red spot mushrooms. So,、um, and everybody has mushrooms. It's one of the things I just did is I loaded up all of my Bakamono. Every single figure has got. A mushroom, even the ones that aren't in this list,、um, they all have mushrooms. So, 
that's going to be my thing for my bakamono. All my, my oni have busted temple bits on the bases and all my bakamono have mushrooms. So there we go. We will be back and take a look at Carl's list and he can explain to you what he's got. All right, so here's my list. Uh, I'm running the blessed theme, so the few Shisai models that I do have get bonus key. Um, aside from that, i am got Kenzo Ito. He's got Itsunagi's Gambit, so if he goes all aggressive, he gets Brutal plus one. Uh, this is Kyo. This is Sakura. Uh, this is Saburo. This is Taisei. This is Chio. And then this kind of half-painted guy is Isas. So uh, my idea here is just my dad has so many models that I got to be killing them pretty quick. But I don't actually need a 25-point model to kill a Bakamono, you know, once every single turn. So um, hopefully that these guys will do the trick. Uh, aside from that, I did take War Weary to try and mess with the summoning. So first turn, everybody only has a single activation, so he can't concentrate, which uh, gives me a little bit of time to uh, do what I got to do. That's it. Just a really quick video before we deploy um, to show you where my various things are. So I put the totem pole. The totem pole is very restricted as far as where I can put it. It's got to be, in essence, very close to the center of the table. Uh, it can only deviate up to three inches, so um, and which makes it pretty easy to knock out. So I put the um, the cavern hole in front of it. Now, granted, the cavern hole is not this big giant. It's, it's, it'll slow him down or because it's, I mean, literally slow him down because it's difficult terrain, but a lot of his stuff ignores difficult. So, um, but it is, uh, it's there so I can bring Bakamono out and help protect the totem pole right away. So it does, I don't lose my totem pole immediately. And then over here is my um, uh, Idol of the Deep. So. That's it. We will do deployment. Uh, I'll be back in a second. I will deploy first since Carl won the deployment roll. We have deployed um, me first. In essence, um, I've deployed uh, this group of Bakamono in front of the Idol of the Deep so that they can make a dash for it and summon Bakamono at one point cheaper. Um, I put Ig over here. And he's gonna be trying to move up to table to support the Bakamono if I summon them in at the tree up there. And then these guys are all ambushing. So they are flanking and I have indicated the turn and the side. And then this is, so this is my ploy for getting out of the negative of the red spot mushrooms at least for a while is that these two models have Impetuous. They have the Red Spot Mushrooms and they have the Impetuous, but they're in elsewhere at the moment. So um, the Impetuous won't affect them because they won't be on the table. I, I don't know of a rule that prevents me from doing that. If there is, please let me know. But for today, we're gonna assume I can do that. And then that's my key. I have 23 key generated and that's without concentrating. That's um, getting everybody's key and giving an extra key per person because of the year of the of the um, uh, risen sun, and then the um, couple of extra key for the totem pole. Now, keep in mind, Carl got as many key as I did. I think he's got eight models. Seven. Seven. So he got almost as much extra key as I did. So we're both loaded for bear, um, and uh, Carl's key feats are usually pretty good. The Ito's key feats. So. Um, we'll see, like I said, just because I can summon a million Bakamono doesn't mean they're any good. So we're going to find out. That's it. Uh, Carl, why don't we roll to see who goes first? Carl's a four. I have a four. Let's roll again. Six to four. Carl, what do you want? You can go first. I can go first. All right. Um, and you'll notice we each only have one activation marker out, and that's because of Carl's, um, what was that card? War Warrior. War weary. So we only start with one activation each. End of turn one. Um, I So I ran these four guys into contact with the idol, spent a grand total of 20 key, and I summoned 
for Bakamono around the, um, the cavern hall. So I pulled in the Raiders and the Beaters, and then which are the most expensive ones. And then Carl moved everything up. He's got so much key, he doesn't know what to do with it. He's all set for turn two. So um, I will be ready in a moment. Uh, and then Ig ran forward to try to give the generic Bakamono a little bit of help in the middle. Um, Carl scored one point because he has a model on his friendly objective. I scored one scenario point because I have pacifism on Wei, uh, Wei Shu and I didn't uh, do anything forbidden with him. So there we go. End of turn two, uh, lots of fighting going on. Um, the uh, I was summoned in most of my Bakamono, but then a whole bunch got killed in the process. Um, I didn't get either of my, um, where did I? I didn't get any either of my, my Bushi in, but I got all the rest in. Um, so it was brutal, there was poison going on anywhere. You know, you do any damage to a Bakamono and then poison it and it's pretty much over. Um, but uh, Carl did well. He's got an extra point for his objective in the back. Then he managed to kill off, well, he would have had this one anyway because I only had one model on there, but he, he killed it off with poison. Um, I did get rid of the half-snake swordsman dude. What's his name? Uh, Taisei. Taisei. So I did get rid of Taisei. That was a major victory for me. Wasn't sure if I was going to be able to kill anything. Um, but uh, I managed to do that, and I managed to poison um, the red guy right in the middle there. What's his name? Kenzo. Kenzo. So I managed to poison Kenzo. So Kenzo should be passing away after some. I did some damage and I poisoned him. So do you have a way to heal the? No. Get rid of the poison. So after this turn, Kenzo should be passing away one way or the other. Um, however, Carl came out to a commanding, and we we scratched on this one, so nobody got points for this. So Carl, as you can see, the purple dice on his side had four scenario points. I had two, um, primarily because of, uh, just because of my pacifism, uh, because I haven't actually scored any objectives yet. Uh, but that's the way it goes. So we are moving on to turn three, and I guess we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Turn three is interesting because my ambush comes in on turn three on the right hand side so um we'll be uh we'll be doing that so that'll be deployment so i will uh after we roll and and for who goes first um actually i have to deploy those now and then we'll roll to see who goes first so i will uh we'll be back um into into turn three just a quick shot before we get rolling with the next turn so you could see my deployment I brought my three models over here in order to threaten that objective and that gal and that gal. So we'll see how that goes. Um, all right, Carl, let's roll to see who goes first. Five, nice roll. Two. So, Carl, your choice. I assume you're going first? Yeah, I'll take that. All right. End of turn three, um, the, both sides have taken a little bit of damage. I managed to kill my second Ito snake dude. Um, this was with poison from Wu Zhang, um, which was kind of a victory in itself. And then, but Carl has been chewing through my Bakamono. He's killed, he's killed Wu Zhang, he's killed Hiratsuna, and he's killed Track. And he's killed uh, all all those guys, so I am I am hurting. Um, he's got this three point objective, and I don't think there's any way I'm going to get it back. 
I do have that three point objective with a couple of archers and a, a raider, but um, I, I definitely have to think I'm at a disadvantage. He's got three really good fighters here. I have none. And he's got a good fighter and a, well, another character there to, to make me miserable. So, um, but in the meantime, at the moment, at the end of turn three, thanks to pacifism, I am up by one scenario point. So we will see what happens in turn four. Carl, you want to roll? And Carl wins again. So he will be going first in turn four. End of turn four, Bakamono are dying by the dozen, um, and I am not now able to earn back enough key to do much summoning. I did a little bit, two critical summons this turn, um, but then again, I lost um, more models. I lost Trepang, I lost a Spearman. I, I, you know, the combination of wounds, damage, and poison is just killing me. Um, however, for turn four at least, I got the upper hand. I got three points for having his enemy zone. Carl got two points for having the neutral zone. Carl was about to get three points for having my enemy zone, but at the last moment, I had just enough key to summon in Ig, who is counts as Horde because of this dude right here. And I summoned him. Now you see Ig's in the back, but the base is actually where he is. I just couldn't put him on there because it toppled the whole cart. So he is technically within the zone of control. So we are still tying the zone of control. Unfortunately, Carl's two fighters are much better than mine, so uh, I don't expect that to hold out for very long. But at the moment, I got four uh, points to Carl's two, and that was three from that zone and then one from my pacifism. And that brought the total for turn four uh, with Carl with five scenario points and me with eight. So I will get the second victory point. Uh, Carl, you want to put a white die? Or and then tactical roll. And then tactical roll over at it, so Carl gets a, I don't know what that is, a six. And I get a four, so Carl wins the tactical roll yet again. It looks like I'm back to my old form of never winning the tactical rolls. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Kind of hard to make a living if you never get to go first. End of turn five, more bloodshed. Um, as the, uh, we kind of cleaned each other out. He cleaned me off of my favorable zone, his enemy zone. So he's pretty much guaranteed three from now on. Um, I managed to clean out, uh, well, I cleaned out his sorceress and then Chiu flew over here to take out uh, one of my beaters. And then, um, Ig, who has been rolling really well, um, he, every time I bring him, I reincarnate him. Um, and he can't reincarnate anymore, by the way, because you took out, um, you took out uh, um, Wei Shu. That's what was letting him come back. So now that Wei Shu is gone, he cannot come back. Um, and again, I think I'm reading that correct. If I'm not, please let me know in the comments. Uh, you guys know I make mistakes all the time. Um, so anyway, at the end of turn five, Carl has three scenario points for that. I have five scenario points for that and that. And that's where we stand. So we're going into turn six. It is still a tie game. I am up by two scenario points. However, uh, Carl has four fighters, four really good fighters. So we'll see, uh, but he's got to hold at least one back in order to own that zone. So he's not going to be able to come at me with everything. So. We'll see how it goes.
Uh, why don't we roll to see if Carl wins yet again? And he does. So Carl sweeps the uh, the uh, going may, first. May I, mean, I think I won the first. Yeah, I did win one. But anyway, here we go. End of turn six, uh, and I. Wait, there's you'll notice there's a few activations on the table, but the it, the game won't change. So um, no matter what happens. So uh, it turns out that the Bakamono had just enough summoning to get the job done. Uh, the last couple of turns, I was only summoning like turn five. I could only summon two. Turn four, I think I only summoned two guys, uh, and then the last turn, I only had enough to summon one but I just loaded everything up onto the, the center objective and then Carl did his best shot. He charged guys, you know, uh, Chiu flew through the air and charged the center and, and Saburo came around and charged and this guy came around and walked into combat and he did kill a bunch of Bakamono, but in the end I just had too many. Um, even if Saburo would manage to kill the uh, the the shield guy right there, I still have an archer with a movement and I could walk onto the thing and that would still give me two models to one. So um, either way, um, and even if we tied the center, I would still, because I was up a couple of points, I would still get the second point. So it was really close. It was interesting. Um, there's just, you know, with the, with the, the way the, the rule is currently worded, you can summon just a tremendous number of Bakamono on the table, which is really handy. Um, but they're Bakamono. So, I mean, getting, getting them one shot is kind of the standard, not the exception. And once you start losing the guys who can't be summoned back, um, then it really, you know, it, the pile-on really starts to happen. But, um, but this was an interesting game. It went all the way to turn six and, and was in doubt all the way up until the last... Um, attack didn't didn't go the way Carl had hoped. If he had managed to kill that that um, that shield guy, then he could have walked into one of my other Baka moment, um, maybe killed that, and then taken over the center objective. But it just didn't work out that way. I managed to roll well enough on my defense on that guy that I survived. So anyway, there we go. Um, so it was interesting. It just just goes to show that. The, the, what I've been saying up to this point is that the summoning Bakamono doesn't win you too many games, but it keeps you in them. In this case, I, you know, I, I must admit that it did win me the game, but just barely. I mean, it, it just kept me in the game and kept me in the game. And because this was an area control mission or zone of control mission, I could summon Bakamono onto the zone of control and they would score. Had this been a mission where you're doing simple activations, the Bakamono come in exhausted and they wouldn't be able to activate those idols and we probably would have had a different result. But um, but it was fun and it wasn't uh, horribly overwhelming. Um, Carl is pretty confident that if he had gone, rather than numbers of low to mid value guys, if he had gone with two or three just absolute killers, he would have walked through the list. He would have been able to one shot the Bakamono just about every every melee and gone through me so fast that I, I would run out of summoning really fast and then the game would have been his. So maybe we'll have to try that scenario at some point in time. Um, this is not something you're likely to see live because it's I'm slow playing all these Bakamonos, too many figures, too many rules. I'd never take this list into a tournament. It would be horrible for my opponent and uh, unfair for both of us because we'd never get through a game in two hours. So, uh, but it is a fun and amusing list to try out when you're doing pickup games like this. So, uh, everything worked. I think I remembered most of my rules, uh, which is a shock. Um, but again, like I said, I was not playing fast. I wasn't trying to play slow, quote unquote. I just had so many things to try to keep track of. Anyway, I guess that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carl. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. We will see you next time on Gitsapalooza.